Yes now, bless now. Don't forget the rest now. Des at King of the Pit TV signing in. We're listening to Paramore. I'm going to go through the entire first record. I've already screwed up. I got listening to the self-titled record. All right, I got halfway through the first song before having a look at the credits and it got part in 2013. And thought, wait a minute, some of them add up. So I've had to revise myself. All we know is Fallen is the first record, first full length record they put out. So we're going to check it out. Without further ado, this one is entitled All We Know. Let's go. We tried so hard to understand, but we can. We held the world out in our hands, and you ran away. It takes some time to let you go. So there's been a real powerful introduction to the record already. The moment the guitars came in, da -da 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 -da, just stabbing their way through whilst the drum just very powerful kick on the drums, keeping that hi-hat moving. The vocal, self-explanatory, really long, elongated, proper belt in it. Um, here we've got a red sofa uh, on the album cover just sat in a wooded area uh, I don't think too much to this cover what what do you think about this cover we'll go back to the start of that chorus this is what I know of Paramore because I all I know is um, misery business and um, there was a 2017 record which I forgot the name of it had a tune called Rose Coloured Boy on I don't know how I got around to hearing that, but it was pretty good. I, li I liked that. But I think they developed a completely different sound as to where they initially started. So right here, we're listening to the guitar-driven um, pop-punk slash rock uh, Paramore, I believe. Uh, regardless, nice little uh, vibrato in the vocal. Very powerful belting. <laughs> So we're having a good development on the back end. It is just guitar driven, you know, band music. But initially we had the one male vocal doing a, uh, and now it seems like we've had a lift. We've got more voices in the mix uh, the second time around. So from the get-go, we're 1 minute 43 in, we've hit two choruses already, we know that the band can write a good chorus, so we're probably going to be hearing a consistency of that throughout each and every one of these tunes. <laughs> dynamic so these lot can write a song these lot can write a song first chorus first chorus bridge with an incredibly different dynamic and what's going to happen now is this dying down of the song during the bridge section which relieves you of the song as a whole 
we're going to kick back into the chorus and it's going to be accented tenfold due to how quiet this section is. How minimal it is. I like the sound of the guitar too. Here we go, I'll give you a count in. In one, two, three, and... Yo, Paramore have set me up. I just embarrassed myself there. There's not gonna be another chorus. All right, you know what? You know what? When it comes to songwriting, yeah? You want to learn the rules inside and out and then you break them. That's what Paramore's just done. Put me on my ass. I, I just got tricked in a very good way. That's what happens when you try to be smart. Right, let's keep it moving. We've got pressure next. Too much Before pressure, we... pressure, pressure, pressure. You know that one. That's a um, negative approach. You know, if you're listening to Paramore reactions and you know about negative approach, uh, I, I respect that. There's King of the Pit TV. We're listening to Paramore's uh, All We Know Is Falling record. This is track two, Pressure. Let's go. I'm expecting big choruses in each, every one of these tunes. a great light twinkling of a clean guitar in one ear. I just want to comment on something. Let me just double check when this record was put out. This was out in 2005, right? This sound, not only is it a brilliant sound, obviously, but they timed the release of this record right. Because around 2005, you know, emo girls in high school, I swear to God, I'm sure... Well, I know they ate this up, but it's no doubt they ate this stuff up because this is a great sound of the time. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it was ahead of its time, but more so it arrived at the right time. Uh, this, this, this is significant in relation to what the alternate scenes and circuits and communities were sort of embarked in within that time with the whole scene kid thing emo uh, or like what emo became checkered hoodies and stuff like that don't forget the checkered van shoes as well Carry away. 
I heard a little bass guitar fill there. I mean, that's the first time I've consciously paid attention to the bass guitar. The bass guitar has just been drilling the, the root notes of the uh, the chord progression on the riffs, basically. Like, that. the bassist is, you know, what can I say? I, I don't want to be offensive because they're doing what's right for the band, but the bass don't really have much character, to be honest. Great twinkling guitar. That's that is a fantastic twinkling guitar. That's a very emo guitar. And I had to let them go. Some things I'll never know. And I had to let them go. But I'm sitting all alone, feeling empty. I can feel. Let's keep it moving. Emergency. I'm. I'm just. What this is. This like? is um, easy listening. These tunes are just flowing like water. I've only heard two, but I know that I'm in for an easy listening ride. Nothing harsh. Nothing in your face. To to an to an extent, nothing like no extremities of the sort. We're gonna hear good songwriting. Relatively simple but effective and efficient instrumental and great belting vocals on them choruses. I might be incorrect because I have been incorrect so far, assuming I knew the structure of the first song. But let's keep it going. Let's see let's let's see if I'm right or wrong. There's King of the Pit TV, all we know is falling, track three. We're listening to the whole record. This is emergency. What the hell is that? Really not your fault and really not your fault at all. No one cares. And no one cares to talk about it. I'm sure that hit a lot of a lot of teenage teenagers back in the day. Talk about it. Talk about it. The guitarist has a great way of playing these broken chords. I'm really fond of the guitarist's twinkling play. know what even though it is just like guitar driven rock music um which you could arguably say it's pop punk music even within that box and that categorization there is a great emotive value i mean emergency is quite a shocking powerful word 
And it reminds me of one song of a band I've never checked the music out of, aside this one song. But 30 Seconds to Mars had a hit called The Kill, didn't they? And although it's like, not necessarily, it, the soundscape's nothing like this, but it's, it holds an emotional sort of communication. It possesses a way to communicate this emotion to you in packaging, which just doesn't, um, I don't know. I don't know. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm kind of speechless. I think there's a big nostalgic value in this music to me. So I think that's why it's um, connecting a little better. This is taking, this is taking me back to finding identity um, as a teenager not being interested in school and outside of school meeting loads of colourful people in the alternate community who was into music like this and where there was a lot of bands um, performing music like this and just blowing up like Paramore I don't just put this record out around this time this is really cool <laughs> Well, to be fair, Paramore were, had this record out, but, you know, the precursor of things to come as far as the, the sounds and the bands influenced by this sound and so forth, really that community. I've seen you cry way too many times. Just the way it's said with like these blaring um, just power chords in the background. It's so simple yet so effective. Because you know, you know that Hayley Williams is speaking to the person who's listening to her at that time, who's growing up, who's having this influx of unstable feelings and emotions. That really brilliant, really brilliant. Yo, Haley Williams is speaking to me, man. I was, uh, I liked emo stuff back in the day. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I was, I was, I was an emo kid for a minute. This twinkling guitar. I've seen love die way too many times. Them bits. Uh, with that twinkling guitar, it reminds me a bit of Lost Prophets as well. Does that? That's something they would have done. We got brighter next. That 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 was my favourite tune so far. Yeah, that that was my favourite tune so far. I thought that was a banger. We got brighter coming up next. That's quite a catchy hook as well. There's King of the Pit TV. This one's brighter. We're having a whale of a time so far. The last track was great. All we know is falling. Track 4 or 10. Let's go.
we're into track four and I can now tell you just through pattern recognition they like a twinkly clean guitar and I don't blame them they pull it off very well quiet because I'm trying to pay attention to the lyrical content. It's great songwriting because it's relatively simple, it's nothing over complicated, but it it talks, you know, it talks. If you're in a relationship, if you've lost somebody you love, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> I like the introduction of the uh, male vocal coming in, just the backing vocal, he started to speak as opposed to just the underlaying uh, harmonies, which is quite cool. It'd be very easy to make the chorus sound too busy, but they do pull it off. That was a good tune, I mean it's nothing we haven't heard before. I think we're starting to find the standard Paramore sort of stay within. We've got Here We Go Again, right? Des, King of the Pit TV. We're listening to Paramore's All We Know Is Falling record. Uh, this one's entitled Here We Go Again. Don't know what to expect. Uh, from what we've heard so far, I assume we're going to follow on with the same sort of vibe. Let's find out. Loki quite heavy, them guitars. 
from very low end. <laughs> not the best Paramore song on this record so far, is it? But it doesn't lower the standard of the record. I mean, we're still staying within the same space. I think a very important aspect of the band is how clear and connective is the verse section and how melodic is the chorus section. Easier said than done. This is great, even I'm taking something from this. It, everything is very emotionally driven. We're not staying in too much of a descriptive state whatsoever. We're not trying to explain and do that. We're talking about how we feel. I'm sad to see you go. And we're consistently in this viewing things from an emotional manner. And that's what, what makes it powerful. And that's what made this band connect, no doubt. cool um what can i say what can i say we are very consistent it's a very consistent record so far i want to hear i want to hear this banger though i know in the next four songs we've got six seven eight nine ten one two three four five we got how does that even work i'm blagged one minute six seven eight nine ten man i must be <laughs> <laughs> I must be getting tired because I can't do simple uh, mathematics at the moment. But this next five songs, yeah, I know there's going to be a really, really, really good chorus. And I really want to get to it. I really want to get to it. Next, we've got Never Let This Go. Because we've had them in the past. I liked um, Emergency. 
Emergency's been my favourite so far, and I want to find one that uh, appeals to me on the same level. So, there's King of the Pit TV, listening to Paramore's first record, All We Know Is Falling, from start to finish. This is track six, it's entitled Never Let This Go. We're not gonna, don't you worry, let's go. That twinkly guitar, every track, it's not a bad thing. this record whether it likes to or not in my opinion revolves around heartbreak and um, relationship difficulty this is a breakup record maybe not from the perspective of Haley, but in regards to the people whom this record may connect with the most especially back in the day this is an emo breakup record this is a they're too good for me record this is a times are hard i'm an emo I've got a fringe swept over one eye record and I love it for that. I've heard that melody in that phrase even before, but I can't tell you where. Rings a bell. Just so you know, if you are a Paramore fan, I most definitely will be uh, listening to Riot as well because this is a great listen. This is a very simple listen, nothing over complicated. I don't have to be so consciously drawn into everything. I can just sit back and enjoy the melodies and feel the record, which is really nice. <laughs> Some great drum fills. But I just that little clean guitar there just got me thinking. Um, Haley would have been brilliant fronting Oasis. <laughs> it's just just some of that snuck into my mind. She would have done really well fronting Oasis as well, singing their songs and being the front individual. Great powerful voice. But I can't find the words to tell you. I don't wanna be alone. But now I feel like I don't know you. And I'll never let this go. But I can't find the 
We got a tune entitled Whoa next. Let's keep things moving. What do we feel like? Is it gonna be in relation to a breakup of any sorts? It, will it have breakup vibes? Let's find out. And then we got a tune entitled Conspiracy. Uh, Alex Jones on guest vocals. That'd be sick, mate. To be fair, on YouTube, I don't even, I shouldn't even really be saying his name because of algorithm. There's King of the Pit TV. This one's entitled Whoa. Let's just keep things moving, people. Oh, this is like a chorus I'd write and I don't say that necessarily in a positive manner I say that because we've come up with a nice little jingle but it doesn't hold the uh, emotive value we've heard in the last chorus sections where uh, there's been like a, a, a proper good message this is like a crowd participation song everybody sing it whoa whoa They do this quite regular. They'll only go into the clean guitar for one or two bars and then they'll kick back in. They just relieve everything just for a moment. On a side note as well, when I was speaking of the chorus, uh, it does have good crowd participation emphasis, if anything, better than any of the songs we've heard because it drives, um, you know, a reception, a sing-along from the crowd. But on the view count, this might as well be like the least viewed track on the record. And that goes to show it doesn't necessarily have the replay value that the people are looking for in relation to the other songs. This isn't a Paramore Paramore song.
This next tune is entitled Conspiracy. Seven hundred two thousand views, so we've gone more than double of the view count of the last song. So this in relation should be quite good. Might have been dancing like these lot. It's only one way to find out. There's King of the Pit TV. This one's entitled Conspiracy. Uh, this has been an interesting listen. It's been quite fun, to be honest with you. Let's get into it. Oh, up here, Hawthorne Heights, right about now. Oh, should I listen to some Hawthorne Heights? You tell me. I only had so many tunes from LimeWire back in the day. I never listened to the whole record. Every once in a while, they'll just hold back. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. They'll have these slight, minute little breaks in the music, which just really re emphasizes when the chord comes in. Because they're only playing power chords like from start to finish of this record. They'll do broken chords here and there, but generally, with the distortion on, it's just. Dun, 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 dun. And they do a lot with what little they work with. Like them little breaks there is a really good tool to just sort of bring you back to life and have you, you know, concentrate back in on the tune. Explain to me this conspiracy against me. Who are we talking to? That was conspiracy. Um, I like the line 
explain to me this conspiracy against me. I like that line. Overall, uh, I'm still not finding that chorus I'm looking for. I told you earlier on, in this last five songs, I know there's going to be one brilliant chorus and we've only got two songs to find it. So next is Franklin. Who the hell is Franklin? Des, King of the Pit TV, signing in live and large. This one is a title, Franklin. I'm going to have a quickie on. <sighs> it's getting late. It's like one in the morning. And we're listening to the full record. Or oh, we're getting to the end of the full record at this point. Without further ado. Let's do this. We blended conspiracy into this track, it seems. I love that. I love that. He's got a great voice. And I like that. He's, he's, he's pumped down in the mix just as he has been prior. They didn't want, to, they didn't want this guy to steal Haley's shine because I low-key think this guy could have just run with the band. This guy's delivering the pure emo vibes, man. Do you remember? Come on. I love this. He's breaking it up. Do you remember? Just blasting the syllables, whereas Haley's just elongated. Uh, uh, just the contrast between the two. This is a powerful tune, this one. Is that on the toms? I thought that was a snare roll. That's a, he's rolling on the toms. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. You know what? I'll if if my heart, the next track, doesn't have the chorus I'm looking for, I'll happily leave it with that. I think he stole the show on that tune. 
Is he the guitarist? I think he stole the show. I thought that was brilliant. I really like that. My heart, let's finish off this record. Is HelloFresh worth the price? Okay. Abs One million. 1.2 million views. This is going to be a good tune. Des, King of the Pit TV. I've been looking for the golden chorus in these last five songs, yeah. Franklin, that was the track before this, was brilliant. But it didn't have the chorus I needed. This one's at 1.2 million views. It must be one of the fan favourites on this record. Let's check out why. Fingers crossed. This album is Relationship Issues, the record. Go put some respect on his name. Come on. Did this band ever play with Hawthorne Heights? I hope. These two on a on a bill of equality. This is a sign of the times. I'm surprised they've gone so heavy on these harsh vocals at the end. I thought just the one time was alright. We're going completely off brand here.
I'll go as far as saying I didn't like them harsh vocals drilling the whole chorus. But that was it. That was all we know is falling from start to finish. That was a good record. That was a good record. Um, I'm going to give you my full honest opinion and the rating in another video. But that's going to be on my Patreon. So check that out in the description. And until next time, I'm signing out. So thank you for watching. Shout out to all the Paramore fans. This has been an enjoyable experience. I'm signing out.